You guys are tired? Well, you guys got to wake up. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. I can see that you guys are grabbing your notes, which I'm super excited about because I know that God has a word for you. Um, Like they said, my name is Mariah Bagden. I am our connection coordinator here at Victory Family Church. And I just want to really take this moment and I want to welcome all of you who are here today. We have our Cranberry Campus. That's you guys. Can you guys make some noise? Okay, we can do better than that Cranberry Campus. Make some noise. Come on. We also got our Newcastle family hanging out with us as well as our online family. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We believe that God has a specific word for you who are watching right now as well. But right now, I actually want to acknowledge all of our first time guests who are in the building. Guys, we just want to let you know that you are family and you belong. Something that I love that Pastor Ben always says is that you actually belong before you believe. And so you don't belong just because you believe what we believe or you come in and you worship and you do all the Christian things, but we actually say that you belong way before you believe because we love you so tremendously and we are so excited that you are here. So if it's your first time guest, come on guys, can we make some noise for them? We're so happy they're here. Also, Pastors Ben and Alyssa Archer, guys, they are on vacation right now. That is why I am up here. I just want to take a moment and honor them because how many of us know, guys, we have the best student ministry pastors in the house. Can you guys get an amen? Come on, they are so incredible. I know that they speak so highly of you guys, this next generation. They really only believe the best about you guys. I know that the world has a lot to say about middle schoolers, about this next generation. But I know one thing is our student ministry pastors say the complete opposite. They love you guys. They believe in you. And then they know that you have such an incredible, remarkable call on your life. Come on, can we give it up one more time for our student ministry pastors? Pastors Ben and Alyssa Archer. Well, real quick before I get into my message, I want to remind us why we exist as a church. Because how many of us know we can come here every single weekend and you can go through the motions, right? You can kind of lose sight of why are we actually here again? You know what I mean? And so we exist. Our whole mission of why we're here is to help people all people for that matter, realize that God loves them unconditionally. And I know that that's something that you hear every single week of like, okay, God loves me unconditionally. Like, what does that even mean? Guys, I want to show you the impact that actually is attached to why we are here. We had one student in eighth grade last year. She had come for the very first time. She was invited by one of her friends. And she came, and I remember she was telling me that, that all she really knew was religion. And so what that means is she kind of just knew that, that God was real. He was maybe, maybe far away, didn't really want to do anything with her. You know, maybe she has to, to, to have a better behavior. She has to climb this ladder to maybe for him to like her. All those different religious mindsets, you know, that a person can have. And she says all it took was one message, one moment in the presence of God, to realize that he loves me with no conditions. He loves me in my shortcomings. He loves me in my faults. He loves me in the midst of my sin. He loves me no matter what. Do you know that right then and there, she gave her whole entire life to Jesus. She's on fire for God, and now she is consistently coming back to church every single week. Come on, isn't that remarkable? This is why we're here. This is why we encourage you to invite friends to church. It is because we believe that right here, right now, God wants to show up in your world. He wants to show up in your friends' worlds, and he wants to do what only he can do, which means transforming human hearts. Amen? Come on, that is why we're here, and I'm so excited to be here with you today because I believe, guess what? God has something to say to you here today. Do you believe that, church? Do you believe that the creator of heaven and earth has something to say to you today? Come on, let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much, Lord, for this time I have with your precious students, your precious children. Lord, I thank you, Father, that whatever they may have came in with, maybe it was a heavy burden that's been weighing them down. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's a situation at home or at school. Lord, I thank you, Father, that right here, right now, we can lay it at your feet. We can lay it all down at you, Father, because we know that we are so loved. We are so chosen. We are so valued to you. 
And we thank you for all of this. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said amen, amen. Okay, so before I get into my message, I want to play a quick little game with you guys. Is that okay? It's going to tie into my message, so it's all going to make sense. But basically, the game that we're going to play is called Guess That Voice. So we're going to show a little audio about like five-second clip of a voice of someone that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. But you guys will, when you have figure out who it is, I want you to raise your hand. I don't need to say anything. And then once the video is done, I'll, you guys will be able to, to shout out the voice. And so we're going to play a voice, and you guys have to guess who it, is, who it is. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Roll the first clip. And we give him the power to speak to us. All right, shout it out. All right, that was an easy one, right? Okay, 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 we'll do the next one. You belong here in your family. The moment that you walk through these doors, you belong here. I'm so glad that you guys are here today. Hey, we're going to go ahead. We're going to jump in. Shout it out. All right, all right. You guys got both of them. So it's both our student ministry pastors. Whew, you got it. All right, now we're going to switch it up. This is our last one. Ready? Some of the way forward, and I want him to just share his heart with you a little. Shout it out. Pastor John Nuzo. Awesome. So you guys won. You guys knew the, the, the voices of those people. But my question for you to hear today is how did you know their voice? Right? Wait a minute. You didn't see them. They didn't walk through the door. I didn't have to tell you it was them. You just recognized their voice, right? How did, you, how did you recognize their voice? You knew them. You personally knew them. You know their character. You spent time with them. You know their heart. You know their character. Without me even having to tell you who that was, you heard and you knew. Can I tell you today? That that's the same thing that happens when God speaks to you. That you actually can hear God's voice. That he doesn't have to walk through the door. There doesn't have to be a big neon sign that says this is God's voice. Can I tell you, as a middle school student, you can hear and know God's voice. But you might be here today and be like, Mariah, no, I don't. I'm too young. That's for my parents. My parents can hear God's voice, but I can't hear God's voice. I don't know all the Bible. I don't, I'm not spiritual enough. I don't, you know what I mean? You, you have all of these thoughts in your mind to why you can't hear God's voice. But I came here to tell you with good news that you yourself, if you have given your life to Jesus, if you have said yes to him, I want to tell you that you can hear his voice. Why? Because just like you were able to hear your pastor's voice, how much more are you able to know and fully understand the very creator who knit you together in your mother's womb? The very one who has detailed and, and, and planned out your whole entire life, how much more do you know your creator, your redeemer, your father's voice personally? I love it, there's a scripture that makes it so clear. It's in John chapter 10, verse 4. It says this. It says, when he has brought all his own sheep outside, this is talking about Jesus and we're represented as his sheep. It says, when he has brought all his own sheep outside, he walks on ahead of them and the sheep follow him. Because why? They know his voice and they recognize his call. So plainly right here, it tells us, hey, you actually are represented in the scripture as sheep. And Jesus is represented as your shepherd, which basically means that he's guiding you, he's leading you. And it says so clearly right here that they follow him because they know his voice. Can I tell you here today, you know God's voice. I don't know who's told you that you can't hear God's voice, that you're too young that you're not spiritual enough, that you don't have what it takes. But can I tell you, you do know your Father's voice. How many of you know that you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you? 
Can you raise your hand if you know that you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you? Can I tell you, if you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, boy, do you know God's voice. He is living and breathing in the inside of you, speaking to you all the time. Now, I know when we hear that, we think, well, God's speaking to me. I don't hear an audible voice, you know, like one that's like, Mariah, I'm speaking. You know what I mean? You think, I don't hear an audible voice. Can I tell you, you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You want to know what, what even just God speaking to you may sound like? It could be a thought that you have come to your mind that you know didn't come from you. Have you ever had that before? Where you had a thought come to you before and you knew, oh my gosh, I'm not smart enough to think about that. I'm not smart enough to come up with that. That had to be the voice of God. So today, I'm not going to talk to you about how you can hear the voice of God. I'm going to talk to us about why we aren't hearing the voice of God. You can entitle the message today, Why Can't I Hear God's Voice? There's this passage in the Bible. It's one of my favorite stories. It's a, a passage with Martha and Mary. They're two sisters. It's in Luke and they're basically preparing for the guest of honor to come to their house. And the guest of honor is the man, Jesus. And so they're cooking, they're preparing, they're prepping, they're doing all of the different things. And right when Jesus shows up to the scene, Mary stops everything she does. She stops cooking, she stops cleaning, she starts, stops preparing. And what she does is she instantly gets down, she sits before Jesus, and she is attentively listening to his voice. Then we have Martha, the other sister. She's still cooking, she's still cleaning, she's still preparing, she's doing all these things, and she's like, hey, Jesus, Mary is just sitting at your feet, she's doing nothing. Tell her to come help me. Right? I mean, I feel like that's a pretty reasonable thing to say. Have you guys ever done that with your siblings? Where it's like, hello, like they're doing nothing, right? And so here's Mary. She's sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha's still cleaning. She's still preparing. And Martha's like, hey, Jesus, have her come help me. And I want us to watch how Jesus responds. I love what he says. He says this. He goes, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. Everyone say distracted. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is a need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. Jesus says right away, hey, Martha, actually, you're distracted by many things that you think is actually important, but Mary has found the one thing. What is the one thing that Mary has found? Mary has found the simplicity of hearing her father's voice. Mary has found the one thing. She's sitting there without distraction. Because how many of us know she could have been distracted just like Martha? But here she is, she's sitting at Jesus' feet and Jesus tells her she has found the one thing. Today I want to ask you a question. What are you distracted by? Because I truly believe that the main reason why we might stand here today and say, hey, Mariah, I actually, I don't know the voice of God. I can't hear the voice of God. Can I tell you the number one reason why you think that is because you are distracted and worried by many, many things. Can I tell you for one what you're distracted by that actually takes you away from hearing the voice of God? It's this right here. It's not bad. It's not evil. I have a phone. But can I tell you that sometimes when this is in our hand, we're missing out on hearing the creator, the redeemer, your heavenly father's voice. Can I tell you that sometimes when this is in your hand, we are distracted by many things. But what has Jesus said? He says, hey, one thing is needed. It's not complicated. It's not hard. It's sitting 
at my feet because I'm speaking. Do you want to know what I think happens sometimes? Is that sometimes this is in our hand or a cell phone's in our hand. And I think Jesus is right up against us and he's saying, hey, I want to talk to you. Do you have a minute? I actually want to talk to you about that situation that's worrying you. Hey, I, I, son, daughter, can, can I have a minute? I want to tell you about the plan and purpose that I have for you. Hey, child, can I talk to you for a minute? I want to lavish my love on you because I know that you've been running to and fro to find something to fulfill you. But I am telling you, I am right here. I am speaking. I have something to say. The number one reason why we don't feel like we can hear God's voice is because we are just like Martha, where we are distracted. We are busy. We are worried by many, many things. What are you distracted by that's causing you to miss the one who is sitting and speaking? And he's saying, my child, I'm here. Will you listen? I want to talk to you. I want to speak to you. Have you even noticed that actually right now we can be distracted? There's some of you in this room today where you yourself are distracted just even in this very room. Where you're talking with your friends, you're on your phone. And I'm not saying that to beat you up. Listen, I'm so happy that you are here. But can you see how easy it is to miss out on what God is saying and what God is speaking because we are distracted and worried by many things? What are you distracted by? I want to take us through three quick points. Three quick points and we'll be done. But I want to talk to us about how we can push past the distractions of life and actually begin to hear how God is speaking to us. Does that sound good? Do you guys want to learn about that? Come on, I don't know about you, but I need the one who created me to speak to me and to give me some insight on my life. I don't know about you, but I need that. Number point number one, don't be too distracted for his word. Can I tell you the number one, the number one way how God is going to speak to you is through his word? Sometimes we say, oh, I feel like God's silent. He's not speaking to me. Can I tell you your Bible is closed, right? Right? If you feel like God's not speaking to you, it is because the B-I-B-L-E is closed. When you open that up, can I tell you, there is a full book speaking to you. It actually says in scripture that God's word is alive and active. God's word's not dead. It's not an ancient book that we, we read about once upon a time, but it's actually a book that is alive and active. God is constantly speaking. He is constantly revealing things to you. And can I tell you the whole purpose of the Bible is not for you to read it out of a rules and regulations of what to do and what not to do and how to live, even though it is going to address some of those things. But the whole purpose of the Bible is so that you would re actually get revealed to Jesus who loves you so much. I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but the Bible is a love letter. It's literally a love letter written from God to you. And so when you pick up your Bible... You can know the creator of heaven and earth is speaking directly to you. That it is a love letter with your name on it. And it is to reveal to you that God has been pursuing you before the foundations of the earth. Do not be too distracted for his word. The word of God that is alive and active. 
You might be here today and be like, Mariah, but I don't know where to start in the Bible. I don't know where to begin. Can I encourage you, write this down, start in John. If you don't know where to start in the Bible, John is one of the gospels. It's gonna unravel the life of Jesus, how he lived, how he walked, how he talked, how he responded to people. You'll be able to see Jesus speak so clearly and I know that it'll bless you tremendously. So the book of John is incredible. Do not be too distracted for his word. Number two, one of my favorites, Ready? You guys can probably already read it. Don't be too distracted in church. I already talked about that a little bit. But can you guys see how easy it is to be distracted? Can you guys see that? There's so many times where I'm in worship and I know that God is speaking, God is moving, God's wanting to re reveal things to you. And I look over and, and I, it breaks my heart because you guys are so distracted, right? I could see, you know, you hitting some of the people and talking and doing all these different things. And my heart breaks. I don't get mad. My heart breaks because I'm like, oh, if only they knew that the creator in the heaven of earth is standing right next to them. And he's speaking to them. If only they knew that the one who has painted the skies, hung the stars in the sky, is standing right next to them speaking. I remember so specifically this one time I was dealing with anxiety when I was in high school. It was super severe. I did not want to get out of the house. I did not want to leave. And I remember I was in main service over under Pastor John Nuzo. And it was during worship. And I remember so specifically we had a worship leader named Ellie Del Turco. If you know her, she's incredible. And I remember so specifically she stops the whole entire worship set. And she says, hey. I feel on my heart that there's someone in this room today who is dealing with severe anxiety and fear. And she began to name off like everything I was experiencing. And she said, I believe the Lord wants you to know that he sees you and that fear does not have to grip your life one day, one more day. And I remember in that moment, I went like this. I was shocked. I was like, wait a minute, I'm in church. God just interrupted this whole entire worship set to speak to me. Can I tell you, guys, that is what is happening here in Echo. That God wants to speak to you through other people. I know that some of you personally here today, you've actually had a leader come up to you in your life and say, hey, God's put this on my heart. I want you to know X, Y, and Z. God is not silent in regards to your life. He wants to not only speak to you through his word, but he actually wants to speak to you here in church. Do you believe that? That God wants to speak to you inside a church, he does. Point number three, and this is our last one. Don't be too distracted in your day-to-day -day life. Don't be too distracted in your day-to-day -day life. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about when you're at school, when you're with your friends, when you're in a sporting event, when you're walking through the halls, doing everything that you do in life. Can I tell you, don't be too distracted for God to speak to you there. I remember one time, I met this guy. It always starts off like that. I met this guy. And I remember I was so excited because I was about to go on a date with him. And I remember in this moment, I was so pumped because, can I be, can I be real with my ladies real quick? I thought I was going to marry him, okay? Haven't even gone on a date with him yet, and I thought, okay, this is my husband. He's everything I want on paper. He's perfect. He's a worship leader. He does all these different things. You know, he's, he's in love with Jesus. I was like, this is the man I'm going to marry. And I was so excited. It was the day before our first date. And I remember so specifically, I begin to say this. God, what do you say? I know I have my own agenda. I know that I've just planned everything and I'm excited, but, but God, what do you say? And right there, I heard this still small voice. It wasn't an audible voice. 
But it was a thought that came to my mind that was confirmed with my spirit. Because remember, we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. And I heard this. Mariah, it's not him. And I thought, what? I was like, no, 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 no. God, maybe, maybe, maybe you're missing it. Like, this guy's my husband, right? Like, I'm going to marry him. He's everything I've ever wanted. And so I did what every girl would do. I still went on the date with him, right? Have you guys ever done something that you know you shouldn't have done and you do it anyway? Like, hello, I did that. And so here I go on the date with this guy. It's so great. He's such a gentleman. He treats me better than I ever could have deserved. And I get off the date and I'm driving home. I'm ready to call all my friends, tell them about, oh my gosh, he's so cute, all these different things. And there I heard that still small voice again. It's not him. Mariah, it's not him. I have better for you. Do you know a month later, I came to find out that it wasn't him. He was actually talking to another girl the same time that he was talking to me. I tell you this story because I want you guys to see that when I talk about the voice of God, it's not just something that we talk about because it sounds good, but actually God is so madly in love with you that he wants to speak to you, not only through his word, not only through church, but he wants to speak to you personally through a relationship with him. Can I tell you, if you're dating someone in this room, God has something to say about it. Can I tell you, your friend group, God has something to say about it. The plan and purpose that God has for you, yeah, he has something to say about it. Your family dynamic, yeah, he has something to say about it. That fear that you're experiencing, yeah, God has something to say about it. That sickness in your body that you've been diagnosed with, yeah, God has something to say about it. Can I tell you, God has something to say about every single area of your life. And it's wrapped around goodness. It's wrapped around his love. He's not speaking to you and condemning you. He's not speaking to you and and saying he's mad at you. Everything he says is wrapped around his love. He's just a father. He's just a father. He's just a father. Maybe you're here today and you're like, I don't even know what a father's supposed to look like because my dad walked out on me. Can I tell you, Jesus is the perfect father and he wants to speak to you every waking moment of your life and he wants to reveal his love towards you. He wants to reveal his acceptance towards you. He wants to show you that he has a plan for your life that is far greater above anything you could ever comprehend or imagine. God is speaking. Your father is speaking. Maybe the only thing you hear inside is I love you. 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 God is speaking to you. He is He's not speaking as a judge, but he's speaking as a father. And he's saying, I love you. Child, I love you. I have great plans for you. I love you. In just a moment, we're about to stand up to our feet and we're gonna go back into a worship song. And just like I said in my message, we can be distracted. Right here, you can choose You guys here, right now, we get to choose right now. Will we be Martha or will we be Mary? Will we be like Martha who is distracted by many things or will we be like Mary who gets on her knees and says, Jesus, it is you. 
You are the one. You are the reason I'm here. Speak to me, God. It's your voice. You're my father. I know my father's voice. I know my father's voice. I will not listen to a stranger's voice, but I will listen to my good shepherd who has called me by name and who has taken me out of the kingdom of darkness. What will you choose to do today with the one who is standing right next to you and saying, I'm speaking.